Hello again, and welcome to uh, the second of our webinars today. I know some of you were with us this morning, and, and obviously those of you who, who weren't with us, uh, a very warm welcome. Before we start, can I just um, draw your attention to the disclaimer that should be on your screens. I can see over at David's it is. Um, I know you've seen it many times before, but it's really important that uh, we stress this every time we start one of these sessions. This is can be a very risky business and please don't ever uh, think of trading with money that you cannot afford to lose. Brilliant. Right, um, we're going to do a little bit of a carry through from what we did this morning and look at something a little bit more interesting. Um, if this is the first time that you've, um, you've joined us, basically with this series of webinars that David and I have put together, we're looking at what we call um, a chart structure, how we can identify where we are in the price cycle and also looking at the price cycle or if you like um, sections of the price cycle um, through the prism of what we call the C states. So for example, are we looking at a trend? If we look over here to the left hand side of this, of this schematic, you can see here that is very clearly a trend that is a classical trend in the sense that price is moving higher, then it pulls back and then it moves higher again. So you have a series of what we call higher highs and higher lows that, that are very, as I say, classical definition of a trend. And what we would call that trend, how would we describe the state of that, that trend is um, we, David and I, have, uh, have described it as a, as a C state in the sense that it is a trend without volatility. It's, uh, it may or may not have a lot of momentum, but we know that it's a very different type of price action that we can see at the top here, where we're actually in a period of distribution and, uh, and a, sell a selling climax. And of course, not only do we have to look at the overall structure of the, of the chart, if you like, the pattern of the chart, we then have a look at where we are in the price cycle for the chart. Then we look at, well, what sort of C state is, the, is, is that section of, uh, of price action in? Is it in a trend? Is it in a, in a congestion? Is it an uptrend, downtrend? And we also apply a volume price analysis to that. Now, we have this is, if you like, the, um, the, you know, how we're going to be looking at the charts. This is the global perspective, if you like. And what we're going to add to it in each, um, at each week is we're going to add different, um, if you like, different elements to that. And the element that we and want to add today is we're going to look at support and resistance and how support and resistance and the different ways uh, you can uh, uh, use support and resistance to the chart itself for the sort of information, A, not only to help you give you a framework to the price cycle, but also support and resistance in what it tells you in terms of perhaps where you put your stop loss and also where the price may be going next. And of course, all wrapped up with volume price analysis. Now, this is a schematic. This is from our actually our Forex uh, program. It's one of the slides from one of uh, the videos because what the program does, it goes into this in huge detail. Um, a lot, most of the, all of this is covered, if you like, in its basics in the books, in my books that are available on Amazon. I know some of you have uh, have, have bought them and it, we carry that through in much more detail in the actual program itself. Now, I'm not going to go through um, what I've just said in any more detail than I have done so already, because if I could just bring up my my slides here. What we've done with these sessions, we've actually recorded them. So if this is your first visit and you just want to have a, a you know, a, a bit more information or a recap of what I've just said, then it's covered in more detail, certainly in the first, uh, the webinars, of, uh, the first two webinars carried a little bit further last week. And as I said, and then gradually we just sort of refer to the terminology in the webinars and in order for you to catch up because you know, otherwise we'd have to spend you know, quite a long time on it. Just go to the recordings, just maybe watch the first 10, 15 minutes, and that will bring you up to speed, certainly with regard to the terminology that we use. And as I said, the, the education program is here. It's the quantum trading education site. There are more information of what is included in the program 
uh, of which that uh, schematic is just a very, 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 very tiny part. I'm just going to stop there and pass to David because um, it's very unfair. I was hogged the microphone when we first started. I feel, actually feel quite bad. So I will just pass over to David. Thanks, darling, and a very warm welcome to you wherever you are in the world. Um, it's uh, early afternoon for us. We've got uh, four or five minutes till the uh, US markets open. Um, but wherever you are, a very warm welcome. Good to have you with us. Um, just a very quick um, overview for those of you who have not joined us before. Basically, the way we run these sessions, we use two primary platforms, um, MT4 stroke MT5 and the Ninja Trader. Uh, Anna's got MT5, which you have up there. And I've got the Ninja Trader on my side. And one of the reasons we migrated all the trading uh, indicators over to MT5 was simply because it then the MT5 platform is a true multi-asset platform. If you want to get into trading things other than Forex, if you're if you want to move into index trading, for example, which is where Anna and I started 20 odd years ago in the futures market. If you want to get into trading commodities or indeed trading stocks, MT5 is a great place to start because um, if you want to trade a full-blown futures contract, first of all, you need a futures broker. And secondly, the margin requirements are significant for all contracts, really starting from a few thousand dollars and upwards. And that's just to trade one single futures contract. On the MT5 platform, it's nothing like that. So you have access to all these markets. You'll find pretty much all the indices. You'll find uh, the Far East indices. You'll find the European indices. So you'll find the DAX. You'll have the FTSE. You'll have the Nikkei. You'll have maybe one or two, one or certainly one of the Australian indices. So you've got the indexes, the indices you can trade. You'll find commodities. You'll find metals. You'll f certainly find oil. You may find some soft commodities. And you'll also find a range of stock. Now clearly. You're not going to find all the tens of thousands of stocks that you might find if you were trading in the cash markets, but you'll certainly find a broad section and you'll find both for the US markets and for the UK markets. So if that is your focus if, and if, if you are new to trading, relatively new to trading, it's not a bad place to start because it's not going to cost you a ton of money. You're not going to need a specialist broker because if you find an, um, an MT5 broker and the best place to look is a site we always reference, which is 100forexbrokers.com. And that's the number 100forexbrokers.com. You will find filters there to filter pretty much on anything and you can filter down to MT5 brokers there and you will find them increasingly becoming available. A couple of years ago, you wouldn't have found very many at all. Now you will purely because MetaQuotes have put a huge amount of investment into MT5 to attract customers from the MT4 customer base. So you will find more and more brokers offering MT5 for lots of different reasons, not least of all because you have a much broader array of timeframes and it's a multi-asset multi platform. Ninja Trader, completely different kettle of fish. You'll need a, a paid data feed, but it opens up the, 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 the true markets, if you like, of futures uh, on that particular platform, of course, stocks and commodities and everything else. I'm going to pass back to Anna and uh, we will get going. If you do have any questions, just drop them in the chat box. Happy to answer them there. If they're short questions, if they're longer ones, uh, we'll try and answer them on air for you. And just to carry through from what uh, David has says on the on the MT5 uh, platform, this is the this is the one I use for these sessions. And in fact, I've got my scroll bar uh, uh, sort of uh, two thirds of, of the way down. You can go back up. You can see. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. I mean, obviously, all the um, uh, all the currency pairs. And as I said, this is the Australian uh, cash market. Uh, that's the uh, French uh, um, index. That's the, uh, is that the DAX, David, the German 30. Uh, I think that's the Greek, I think, of uh, Hong Kong. And it on and on and on. So it's, it's just a, a really good, pla nice platform for, as I said, retail traders to have access to these instruments and, and, just, and just practice, as I said, that, uh, possibly without, uh, well, definitely without having to pay um, exchange fees or um, or data feeds or data fees. So anyway, that's um, that's basically it. Now, well, I've actually starting with gold because we're 
we're going to sort of focus um, more on support and resistance. Now, support and resistance can be added to your chart in a number of different ways. And the reason we do that is because it allows us to, as I said, to give the, the chart some kind of structure, just to, to um, almost a gym, if you like a geometric shape to it. Now, what I have on this chart, I've actually got our own propriety indicator here. And the reason we developed this indicator, because this market, regardless of what you trade, whether it's Forex or a commodity or a stock, there will be levels, there are price levels in every market and every instrument that have a sort of um, site. There are obviously levels where there's a lot of buying and selling. You'll have a, a buying climax and a selling climax, but there are also levels that have a site, what I call, David calls, a psychological importance. And it's a level that, for whatever reason, traders and investors have this perception, rightly or wrongly, that when price reaches that level, it is either fair value or it's a good opportunity to buy or it's a good opportunity to sell. And nowhere is that better expressed than in gold and on the gold chart. I think, darling, have you got the Ninja Trader for gold as well? Yeah, there? yeah David's also going to look at it on, uh, from, on the Ninja Trader as well. And for gold, the you know the 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 level that is all always comes into play is the twelve twelve hundred dollar per ounce level and you know it's twelve hundred dollars there and thereabouts because the other uh, um, aspect of of levels is you know we have to allow them you, they are precise but you have to allow a little bit of give one way or another and we can see here that this is the eight hour chart for gold and the reason i've got the eight hour chart is firstly i've got the option to have it on mt5 but obviously gold trades on on globex and then the physical market opens and the deepest liquidity is going to be uh during the physical market but it, you do get some nice moves in globex as well it's a very very uh, you know heavily traded uh, uh commodity and we can see here immediately if we think back to our schematic if we look at the bottom here this is the 1200 uh, uh in the $1,200 per ounce, and you can just about see the solid line. Now, with this support and this version of support and resistance in, that we have on MT4, um, the more solid the line, the the stronger either resistance or support. Now, you have the you have the psychological level, the the idea that you know, and it has bounced off in the past off. $1,200 uh, $1, per ounce. If I go to the daily chart, you can see that. So we are, you know, it. you will have traders and investors just jumping in purely on the fact that it is at $1,200 per ounce. And this support level, I know it's going to be a, a strong support because the indicator tells me because it is a solid line. So therefore, gold has been in a bearish trend. It's quite heavily bearish. But if it's going to carry on lower, then obviously that is a key level. What it also tells me is where is the top? And I've got 12, 12, 20, 12, 21. So it's actually trading within a $20 range. This is on the eight hour chart. Now for you as a trader, if you are a, a got, forget you're being a gold bug and you're looking to buy, you, you just look to gold as uh, you only look to take trades to the long side. And there are traders who do that. All they ever look at is, you know, they just want to buy gold. They, they can't bear the thought that it is ever going to be bearish and it's going to sell off. You are now in a $20 uh, uh, range. What that actually means, what that tells you is that if you are an out and out trader and you don't really, you know, not you don't really care, but you're just looking for a trading opportunity, but you're on a faster time, uh, on a faster uh, chart, that is going to dictate, first of all, where the price, what the price is range, you know, what its range is at the moment. And also, I'll just expand that up and you can see a little bit better there. In these sessions, these are session times, these are not daily uh, uh, charts. If that candle there is very, very narrow and you can, and you're in, that sort of uh, um, market condition, any trade that you're going to take is going to be 
Well, it's going to be tough because prices really just sort of be grinding along. First of all, it's in a congestion and it's in a $20, uh, $20 range. And it's going to be fairly tough, you know, to decide. It's basically going nowhere at the moment. So therefore, understanding what the chart is telling you in terms of its structure, in terms of the price cycle, in terms of its whether it's in a trend, whether it's in a congestion, actually dictates the kind of tactic that you that is best going to work for that chart. So taking the chart, putting support and resistance on there so you know where these levels are will at least give you the answer to, to basically say, well, what is the best tactic for this chart at this particular moment? And is it a tactic that I actually like to trade? Do I like to trade um, it, when something is in congestion? Do I Or do I prefer something to be in a discernible trend. And you have to remember that most markets and instruments spend an awful lot longer in congestion than they do in trends. Now, when they're in a trend and they're very in, in a congestion, they're in a wide congestion, assuming there's no volatility in that congestion, um, because one of the C states that we describe congestion, you can have congestion, uh, um, you have uh, no trend, i.e. congestion with no volatility, but you can also get congestion with a lot of volatility. So if you're swing trading, if you like, within that congestion and you have a lot of volatility, you are going to be whipsawed backwards and forwards. Now, is, does that suit you as a trader? And as a trader, what you also have to decide is, right, you say, well, actually, um, I know what I like to trade. I like to trade gold. Fine. And this is the tactic I like to deploy on the chart. I like to see a trend. I like to take a reversal in uh, in gold, whether it's to the upside or the downside. Fine. So you have already defined for yourself the type of trading setup that you are looking to uh, uh, to optimize to take. But if you don't, if you can't recognize when that uh, trading setup is is uh, is likely to deliver. Uh, the result that you want, you are going to struggle. Now, as I said, this is a, a proprietary indicator for support and resistance, but you can use Fibonacci is, is a classic, um, uh, you know, a definition of the important levels on a chart. These are all horizontal lines. You can use trend lines. We don't have trend lines. We, David and I don't use trend lines on our on our other chart here, we also have what we call our, our VPOC, our volume point of control indicator, where we have price, time and volume on the Y axis of the chart. So it really doesn't matter how you, if you like, uh, define the levels on the chart and bearing in mind that you also have the psychological levels, as long as you do as you have something on your chart, whether you draw them manually or whether you have them on a, uh, you know, through a, some kind of proprietary indicator, that's what these uh, lines will tell you. So that's the, that's what I wanted to say about the gold chart on MT5. I said I'd go back to the daily chart. Let me have a look here, and we can see her better. Here we are. This is the this is the um, this is the pause point at the 1200 um, uh, price um, uh, price level and of course if it's going to go further that's where it's got to it's got to go through there and from a vpa perspective this is the buying that we've you know there has been obviously some buying because price is going up now i do appreciate it is august so we have to look at volumes um in the context of the of the summer but you know looking at the at the buying volumes down there is that sufficient for this to be a major reversal? Maybe it's a trading, uh, it gives you a reverse, you have a trading opportunity based on a reversal trade, but you know, for a longer time, uh, uh, a longer term uh, trade, possibly not given, as I said, the, um, the, the very low uh, volume down here, but I have to keep in mind that it is the summer as well. And it's what I said this morning, it's exactly the same kind of picture that we had on cable. And I said at the time, I said, you know, cable's been heavily bearish, and in fact, it has had a, a bounce. And one of the reasons I said it was likely to have a bounce is because the buying underneath the up candles was not sufficient to drive that price higher. And I suppose with volume price analysis, that's what VPA does. What that, that's what volume does. It helps you to um, uh, authenticate 
what you are seeing on the chart after you've done the analysis of you know what is the chart actually doing and I'll just quickly have a look at I don't know what the there we are and we and I said back here on uh, 1200 we look back to the left of the chart there we are let's see back here there we are 1200 you can see here back here move back move back there's obviously a lot of been a lot of congestion here but it's bounced off back here in 2016 it bounced off there in 2015 and and so on and so forth so you can see that is a an important level from a psychological perspective but if it does go through there where is it going next well there's an awful lot of um, free space this is this is the weekly chart but the next significant level is 11 certainly 1131 and we do have another indicator that we use also for uh, support and resistance and that's the Camarilla level but I don't want to uh, talk about that at the moment um, I just want to pass over to David is that okay Diane can I move over to you you ready lovely if you've got any questions just pop them in the chat box I'll either answer them um, I'll answer directly or maybe we'll save them for um, uh, for later on um, you know before we finish I'll change over is that okay love that should be coming up uh, on your screen now just looking over to run it yeah that's fine um just move my chat box out of the way a bit if i can sorry yeah i've gone i haven't answered the question there i just said hello to david i think um Welcome, David. Hope the weather's good in uh, Kim Bolton. Um, we've got rain down here, so. Uh, Harry and the dogs are stretched out. Yes, Harry and the dogs are stretched out. But sorry, for those of you who listen to us um, regularly, you'll know we have two dogs. They're very quiet at the moment, sleeping under the desk. So uh, let's hope that continues. But if they do kick off, uh, we normally switch off the audio and um, give you a break for their yapping for a, for a few seconds. Um, just staying with, with gold and just picking up on the whole issue of support and resistance. The reason I've got this up, and, and if you're wondering why there is a slight difference in price between what Anna's got quoted on the MT5 and what I've got quoted here is purely because, um, if you look up in the top left here, this is GC1218. In other words, this is the December contract for the futures contract for gold, the GC contract, uh, which is the primary large contract. and um, what you will see quoted on your MT5 uh, may well not reflect that particular contract, hence the reason that the price is a little bit different, but other than that, it's gold. Um, so if you're trading on a price chart on MT5 and it's different to what the futures contract is, it doesn't matter, you're trading a price and the same um, technical analysis will apply. The reason I wanted to put this up was because it does illustrate several facets of um, price action and support and resistance. And what I've got on here is uh, a couple of indicators. I've got the volume point of control. This dashed yellow line here is associated with this volume histogram here. And what this does is it gives you an alternative view of support and resistance. Support and resistance classically, technically, is based on price action. So where price action tests a level, either to the upside or downside, that is where support and resistance builds. The volume point of control looks at it from the perspective of volume, price, and time. In other words, taking volume and the distribution of volume according to the various price levels. So in other words, the longer that price action is in a congestion phase, then the density of volume increases in that region and the greatest concentration of volume is around the volume point of control itself this dashed yellow line in other words think of it as a seesaw and when the price action is rotating around that point the fulcrum of the market if you will then that is the point at which price agreement if you like is being met so to use another analogy, a very simple analogy of a tug of war, both teams are equally matched 
and the center line of that particular rope is not moving in favor of one side or the other particularly. In other words, there's not enough momentum in the market to drive the price away from the fulcrum, which is sitting on this chart at around 12.22 per ounce. That is the heaviest concentration of volume because the price action has spent longest there. And the corollary to that is, first of all, that's where you find the deepest area of volume. And secondly, it also uh, it instates the value that this is a, a point at which the market considers the price action to be important. Now, as you move down the histogram above and below, what you find are these lower levels of volume, the lower concentration of volume. And you might say, well, it's awfully interesting, but how does that actually help? What these define are regions where price hasn't really stopped at that level before. And that's important for two reasons. Firstly, because it means you have much lower concentration of volume in that area. And secondly, it's an area of the price chart which the market doesn't consider particularly important. And as you can see over here, the market moved pretty swiftly through that region. Therefore, you get very light volumes. And what that means from a trading perspective is that when the market moves towards these regions, the anticipation, the expectation is that there is very little in the way of either support or resistance from a volume perspective, in other words, a volume price time perspective, to present a barrier. So it really takes the support and resistance into a different area. That's not to say that obviously price, the straightforward price relationship isn't important. It is it's just a different way of looking at support and resistance through the prism of volume and the concentrations of volume at the various price levels up and down the chart. So that's one aspect. The other aspect I wanted just to, to highlight with gold, and again, it's a good example. It's, it's very clear looking at this that you know, this is not a trend. This is not a market, if you're looking at anything other than an, an out and out scalping opportunity right down at the coal face, and there I'm talking ticks and maybe the one or two minute chart, something of that nature. If you're any further away from the market in terms of time, then from a personal perspective at any rate, this isn't something I would wanna be trading right now. If I was looking at it anything other, let's say from, from the five minute upwards into the slower timeframes. We're talking about a range of what, uh, $7, a, $7 an ounce. Now, on the futures contract, that is a huge amount of money. If you're trading multiple contracts, it's a massive amount of money. But you could, you could win and lose serious amounts of money within this price range. But from a trading perspective, from a longer term development of a trend at any rate, uh, it's not the sort of chart that you want to be trading from a personal perspective. Uh, this started off, this is the nice thing with Ninja, one of the really nice things with Ninja is when you look at the time down here, this actually prints the actual time. We're in the UK, this was seven o'clock in the morning UK time. Here we are, we're over at, uh, what are we, 2.45, and this is three o'clock UK time in the afternoon. So it's very easy to pick out those spots on, on the time frame, whereas it's more difficult on MT5 and MT4 for sure, because they tend to run behind, uh, or in, in front rather. Um, this was seven o'clock. What do we get? We get a huge volatility, ton of volume coming into the market. This was, uh, where are we on? 15 minute chart here. This is at 7.15. Ton of volume coming in. The volatility triggers. This indicator is the vol our volatility indicator. What it signals is price action that move, has moved outside the average true range. What it's telling you is two things. First of all, that you've got volatility in the market. And secondly, that the expectation is that the market may well retrace within the spread of that particular candle or bar. Now, clearly that's going to happen if the market closes well down on the candle, which it has here. But what the volume is also telling you is a massive surge in volume. This does not look strong at all. And indeed, down we go to the other side and then we get a repeat performance about an hour and a half later. The opposite effect, ton of volume coming in, lots of volatility. Back we go again up to the VPOC. Are we going anywhere? Oscillating around the VPOC. Then we get more volatility up here. Didn't trigger this time because it didn't move outside the average true range. Ton of volume coming in here. Back down we go again. There's nothing in this chart. This is this is volatility with no direction. In other words, you know, congestion with volatility, which is just the worst place to be. 
if you get trapped in one of these, you've maybe been in a trend somewhere, and then the market starts to develop this, uh, this sideways congestion with volatility, it is the worst place because it's racking your emotions about all over the place, assuming you're not stopped out at some point. Congestion per se, where you have congestion with no volatility, which is very common, which is probably the most common of all, what you will see in that, those examples is generally very quiet price action, relatively narrow spreads. The market has just gone into its shell. You'll see the volume die away. Um, typically, you'll see this sort of price action two, three, four hours before big news releases, maybe, maybe even up to the news release itself, but then you'll see volatility come in uh, just prior. But generally speaking, that is the sort of congestion price action where it's very quiet, the spreads are very narrow and the volume is low because the market makers insiders are not participating. And the other aspect of volatility, which is goes hand in hand, is that when you get volatility, that is generally when the market makers and insiders or the big operators in the futures market are actually participating. And you can see it very clearly demonstrated here because what it is, is the opportunity for those who manage the market to actually trap you into a weak position. Because you can imagine on this chart, if you took it down to five minute, this sort of shot up, traders jumping in on this thinking, fantastic, here we go, we're off to a nice bull run, bang, down it comes again, trapped, painful. And you're either stopped out or, or even if you're in there, the emotion of sitting through this lot is immense. This is a 15 minute chart. This market's going nowhere at the moment. And we've been sat here since seven o'clock this morning. So practically a day of just going nowhere. And if I just flick it over onto the daily, which really puts the whole thing in context, if you can actually see that tiny candle down there, just enlarge it as best I can, it's there. That is what you're trading at the moment. Now, as, as, a, as anything other than an intraday scalping trader, it's not really where you want to be. And that's the other benefit, the advantage of using multiple time frames. It always gives you that context of what you are trying to do, whether that's a scalping opportunity or not, it just gives you the context of, and it reminds you that you are trading in this tiny, tiny slither of price action right now, and the market is really not going anywhere particularly. Now, you know, if you're trading a congestion, that's fine. If you've got some sort of option strategy that you're trading straddles or strangles, or whatever it may be, uh, that's fine. But generally speaking, we're looking for reversals, we're looking for breakouts or we're looking for trend development or existing trends in place, typically speaking. This chart's also another great example of the, the, the breaking away from the, this is the volume point of control on the daily time frame. So you've got the, the yellow dash line here. It's sitting at a much higher level. And once the market starts to break away from that volume point of control, it'll either be to the upside or the downside. Then that is telling you that the market has now found momentum to move to a bullish sentiment, or in this case, a bearish sentiment. We've still got the heaviest volume here. So the volume point of control has not moved because the volume in these lower regions has not exceeded this volume here. So it will remain there until that happens and at that point the volume point of control will then move to the next level to reflect the fact that volume in those regions is now higher than the old uh, previous position. We had some great support and resistance levels building here. We had this resistance up at the top here which was constantly tested and held and then once this floor of support, this very strong level here which is just below 1300 per ounce is, is breached you can view that as in many different ways. It was breached with a very solid candle, no wicks to the top or bottom, a ton of volume underneath, and the trend monitor transitioning pretty much thereafter in a day or so. Now, if you put all that together, what that's telling you is pretty loud and clear that we've got some immense resistance to any reversal back higher. We've got this huge pressure. We're moving away from the volume point of control. This daily price action closed pretty much near the low of the session on a load of volume. And coupled with that, the trend monitor 
also transitioned. Bear with me a moment. Apologies, I just had to take a, a drink, had a frog in my throat. At that point, the trend starts to develop. You can see the speed that the price action moves through these regions. These are much lower levels. These, these volume profiles here, these are low volume nodes, little activity. So the market hasn't paused there in the past. So why should it stop here at the moment? Because clearly it doesn't consider that level particularly important. And as a trader, what you're looking for all the time is these regions on the histogram to give you a heads up as to what may happen to the price action as it develops. And then down we go into the trend. And we've got another level here, which is pretty strong at 1240, which is also acting as potential resistance in the future. And we now like to be building a level of uh, a platform of support in this region here. So let's just go back onto the five minute. <coughs> As you can see, we're still oscillating around the VPOC. The, uh, you know, it hasn't really got any strong trend direction one way or the other. Let me just go off to have a look. Let's just see what's happening on the, this is the YM. Just move to the YM up here. This is the September contract. This is the uh, E-mini contract for the Dow, Dow 30. And again, this is typically what you might see at the start of a session. This is the contract trading on Globex. And this is the huge volume surge we've now got coming in as the market opens. Again, you can see we've got uh, volatility. We've just got sideways price action with volatility. Is it something I want to trade? No, uh, I have absolutely no interest in trading this at the moment because what I want to see is a nice steady trend, nice even price action. I don't want to be involved with volatility. And clearly, we're not going anywhere at the moment. It's just whipsaw price action. Let's just go back to, um, that's gold. See what's going on with gold. Okay, fine. That's the YM. And you have the same on the ES. Now, I pulled up one or two of the um, stocks that uh, we've been keeping an eye on recently. This one is Facebook. Uh, if you've been following Facebook, you'll know there was a huge dramatic uh, day here where I think it was over, um, I can't remember the figures now, but it was a massive amount of money um, that they lost that particular day. It was, the, it was the largest in history, I think, from memory. And we said at the time, we actually wrote a post, said, you know, it's what you're expecting now, it's a classic opportunity for the market makers to get into this particular stock as phase of congestion and then you'll like to see the this price start to rise again which is pretty much exactly what's happened you can see all the levels down here we've had a, a platform here which it was supported we've now broken through this level here there's a ton of volume on the day itself and we're now starting to to pick up now the trend monitor has not transitioned back to to, to blue yet we're still in uh, uh, bearish territory, but rest assured, um, that looks as though it's uh, going to be ticking up. That's Apple. That's another one. Um, this one's interesting. This is uh, this is Caterpillar. I've got this on on five minute. And again, you can see the how the levels of support and resistance. This indicator is on the Ninja Trader. It's accumulation distribution. This is purely based on price action. It just looks at the price action and the number of times that a region has been tested either from the upside or from the downside. If the price action advances from the upside and it holds, then it's a strong level of support. If it, advanced, if it approaches that level from the downside and tests it multiple times, then it's an area of resistance and it paints it red. So one is blue and one is red, and that's the reason for the different colors. But they obviously act as support and resistance independently of that analysis as well. You can see here, for example, how this held. This was tested, this held, then it was breached, down to the next one. Then it was desperately trying to get up through this level. Now we're struggling to get to this level at 140 spot 20. So it's really just to make the point that 
it really doesn't matter what chart you're looking at and you could almost take and this applies to really everything we talk about from technical analysis volume price analysis it really doesn't matter what you're trading it doesn't matter whether it's a stock whether it's an index future whether it's a commodity whether it's in the cash market whatever it is makes absolutely no difference whatsoever price action is price action volume price analysis is volume price analysis so once you've learned all this stuff you can apply it to whatever market you wish whether you wish, want to trade spot forex currency futures whatever it may be index futures we started in the index futures market and then we migrated through all the others and a whole variety of instruments to boot alongside yeah i've just passed back to anna there for a moment um so i just want to jump in randall's question about stocks right how do you how do you focus well it depends it depends what you're looking it depends what you have to decide what you're looking for there are as you know there are thousands of, are you looking to trade a trade so you're just literally you're looking to buy or sell something and make some money and get out are you looking for a stock um because you're looking for some kind of buy and hold you want it as an investment are you looking at a stock for some kind of option strategy so you have to define the the terms of reference of what you want to do so therefore okay let's take a, a speculator and say right i'm just i'm looking to trade I, I i don't want to hold and i just want to day trade for example this is where it comes back to understanding where is that stock in the price cycle that we looked at so you will be looking at um is the stock in and it doesn't matter if it's a stock it could be anything is it at an accumulation is it a distribution is it in some kind of trend or not one first of all you've got to identify the price where it is in the price cycle then have a look at well what kind of c state is it in and if you want more information on what we mean by c states is it's all explained in the my binary options book now even if you don't worry about whether you want to trade binary options or not but that's where david and i we we that's where it sort of formulated this concept of looking at the chart in this way so it really depends what you want to do the question you're really asking is how do i filter for what I'm looking for. And I have to tell you that back in the day when we were doing option strategies, I used to do it manually because once I know, once I look at a chart and I can see this is in a congestion, this is in a, uh, this is, you know, possibly reaching a distribution, this is an accumulation, this is in a, in, in a trend, you can just flick through. I just used to flick through uh, my, my stocks because I had a very, very, um, uh, very, specific brief i was looking for stocks this is for covered call writing that were in a congestion phase they were moving sideways with a with a, a, a mild bullish tone if you like because what i wanted i actually held the stock um sorry i was looking to buy the stock so i was looking for that stock i would buy it and then i would write a covered call and I would get the premium because what I wanted was I wanted the stock to continue in a congestion, perhaps moving up uh, 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 slightly. But I didn't want to have to uh, I didn't want the strike price uh, to be hit. And, uh, you know, and I'd have to give my stock away, although I I keep the premium. And then I would repeat uh, the uh, the process uh, the following month. So really, you have to decide what it is you know what you want to see on the chart and what you want to see on the chart will be determined by what you actually want to do and i don't know if david do you want to add something to that as as uh, as well uh, and this is where obviously um if you have indicators uh, proprietary ones or, or standard ones you have to use a platform that possibly will allow you to do some kind of filtering on it or you have to look for um, you know so I think trade station has something called radar screen doesn't it David yeah, yeah. and we're actually going to be um, trade station is the next platform that we're going to be look, looking at because um, it radar screen on there is fantastic. It allows you to um, use indicators because the indicators we've developed, you take the VPOC, the volume point of control, right? Um, if 
a market or an instrument is at the BPOC, it's in congestion. If I'm looking for congestion, great. I don't have to bother with anything else. If I'm looking for some kind of, uh, of, uh, of reversal point, well, I'd be looking at one of our indi other indicators. Perhaps I'd be looking at the trend, at uh, the trend dots. Of the trend dot, I've been waiting for a change of colour of the trend dot. I might be looking at the trend monitor. We don't. We are going to cover this in more detail and actually give you some background, as to, more background as to why we developed these indicators in the first place. They are there to support. Uh, the whole volume price analysis methodology. Do you want to say something about the stocks, David? Yeah. Yeah. Very briefly, just to um, reinforce what Anna was saying, and I know we were asked last week about the the various charting package where you can charting packages where you can do filtering. The the um, the feeds we used to use, we used to use a feed called Ten Four. And the charting um, filtering systems, we used a company either called ChartSmart or another one uh, called ShareScope. Um, but in terms of filtering the stocks themselves, we used to work on something like a 1% or 2% price action on the day. And then as Anne said, we just used to flick through them. Literally, you can go through 10, 15, 20 charts very, very fast. I, I, admittedly, there are thousands of them, but that's the way we used to do it because we were looking at Xanata. We were looking at something very, very specific. Um, so you can do it visually very quickly. Then you put those on a filter. Pretty quickly, you build up a watch list, and then your watch list, you're just filtering, and then you're look, watch, going back to your watch list and so on and so forth. The issue that um, I guess you need to decide for yourself is whether you believe you can actually day trade stocks intraday or whether that is um, is not uh, not something that works. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are a lot of arguments that say um, you know it doesn't work. Um, you know, I leave I leave that to you. That's that's a decision only you can make. Just looking at this one, Caterpillar. It's just uh, a nice example I've got up here. This is a little bit delayed. I haven't got the live feed on this at the moment. Um, so if this is not exactly the uh, cash price you're getting quoted, then that's the reason it's, it's five or ten minutes delayed. That's all. I need to upgrade it. Um, but what you're seeing here is just the, the the sideways price action. We've got volatility again. The market opened up with this big volatility spike. Hasn't gone anywhere. I mean, you're talking here about a range of, what, 20 or 30 cents or so. We're trading in this very, very narrow range. And, of course, a lot of it dictated by what is going on in terms of the main index. This is what's going on on the equivalent uh, index the y for the YM. That's not to say the NQ and the ES aren't going anywhere. But I had a quick flick round when, uh, when Anna was talking and... Don't think uh, they're going anywhere particularly either. Where's the why? Where's the? Um, I've got it on tick. Let's have a look at that. No, that's not going anywhere. That is the that's the tick chart for the ES going absolutely nowhere right now. And the same on the YM on the five minute chart. That's what it's doing, and it's no surprise therefore to see. Sorry about that. So, yeah, therefore, to see Caterpillar doing exactly the same thing. That's not to say there won't be stocks which are moving, and uh, there may well be. But um, what this is doing is just constantly oscillating between these levels of uh, support and resistance, very, very narrow. But it just makes the point, this is very strong resistance overhead and pretty strong support underneath. Now, once one of these is breached, and more importantly, once it's breached with associated volume and solid price action, that's the point at which you can then decide, do I want to trade this? Do I want to trade this as a potential reversal, whatever that reversal may be? Do I want to jump into this reversal early? Do I want to trade this as a breakout? Or do I want to wait until the trend starts to develop in a more consistent way? And I want to get into that position. And, and all of those carry a price because if you want to trade reversals, then the cost of entry is that much higher because you have to put more money on the table in terms of your protective stop loss because it's got to be wider and if you think about it it just makes sense because if you're jumping into a trend that's already moving then you don't need to have such a wide stop loss protection because you know the direction of travel you've got a pretty good idea of what the price action is and therefore you can adjust your stop loss accordingly it can be that much tighter when you're trading a reversal and to some extent when you're trading a breakout you have to allow more uh, air and more um, uh, scope for that position to breathe because you have to allow for the fact that the trend has not started to develop yet and therefore you may be subject to a pullback or reversal against that position 
uh, albeit the trend may develop thereafter, but you have to allow that position to breathe and therefore you have to put more risk on the table. Now, risk and reward go hand in hand because the more risk you lay out, then the more reward you will benefit from if you're right because you've got into that position early. You've put more money on the table. The payoff for that is you get into the trend much early once it starts to develop. As you can see here, we're still sitting on this level here. It's just refusing to go through there. And, you know, we're not going through here for the time being and just going back to the main index. That's the reason why there's no major direction in this market right now. We're just flip-flopping around, going absolutely nowhere. And whether you have this as a tick chart or a Renko or a time chart, it'll all be doing the same sort of thing. So until there's some market direction, until Donald, bless him, uh, sends us a tweet and bang, you know, off we go to the market. Um, or the volume picks up or there's direction, you know, that is what we're facing right now. Just going back, sorry. Sorry, could you jump after David? Yeah. Uh, David, on, I'll just answer your question on air. Um, yeah. uh, you're absolutely right. The, um, as a company, if you're not familiar with us as a company, what we do is once you buy an indicator from us, that's it. You never pay us any more. So you get full support 365 days of the year, seven days a week. But you also get all the upgrades, whether that's an indicator upgrade, and we're always upgrading them, but also a platform upgrade. And one of the biggest we've done, certainly in the last 18 months, was Ninja Traders 728. It was hugely complicated. And I have to say, fraught with problems for our development team. Um, and I have to say, we were not alone because what was happening was um, Ninja released the platform early. And then as they fixed bugs, we would actually fix something. And then in the next release, they'd fix something else. And that would break something on one of the indicators. And that went on repeatedly. Um, that was their decision. That's what they decided to do with hindsight. What we could have done is wait and wait until the platform had settled, but we took a decision to develop early so that our customers had access to Ninja Trader 8. Caused us more problems in the longer term, but there we are. That's the decision. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, but we didn't have it. So there we go. Uh, to answer your question, David, yes, uh, it's pretty stable now. I would say we've ironed out pretty much all of the bugs. Um, having said that, you know, Ninja rolled out version 14 a few days ago and something else has cropped up pretty minor but you know that's what happens all the time so it's it's there um you know it's entirely your choice as you can move from as a customer you have the choice of moving from mt4 mt5 to ninja and any other platform we develop in the future you know that choice is yours there's no cost involved you just have to drop the guys a, a, an email at help desk and, and we'll help you sort through that the only thing i would caveat is is with this is that there is a difference in price between uh, the MT45 and Ninja Trader, not for any other reason other than the pricing is because we have the tick speedometer indicator, which is this one here on Ninja Trader, because Ninja Trader gives us the option to trade tick charts, which you can't do on MT4 or MT5. And that's down to the data feed, nothing else. It's purely down to the data feed. And so you can trade a chick tick chart, which looks horrible here on the ES on 144 tick. Um, and it's running a bit faster now, 610. I'll just up that to 610 ticks. Doesn't make a great deal of difference. Still in sideways. Um, and that's the only difference really between it. But if you don't want the tick speedometer, then you know, that's fine. Um, it's not an issue and uh, you can just migrate all the other indicators across. And indeed, having said that, what um, just to highlight this, this is these are the two indicators that we've now, just move that out of the way that way. These are the two indicators that we've now ported over onto Ninja. These have literally been released this week. This is the Renko indicator, which is the equivalent for MT45. Um, as some of you will know, on Ninja Trader, Renko is a standard charting option whereas it's not on meta quotes but it is on ninja trader and what we've done here is we've actually um, taken it to another level if you will because we call it the renko optimizer because up at the top here or sorry down at the bottom here it says please switch to a time chart to calculate best renko box size we're on euro yen here spot market but 
This can be applied to anything you care to choose, indices, commodities, whatever, it doesn't matter. All we do is just click on whatever time frame. If we click on the one minute, what the indicator does is it then delivers down here, you can see the optimal box size for this particular market at this particular time of day. Because what it's doing, I'll just click that, it says 24. What that 24 means is that it's going to create a Renko chart based on 2.4. In other words, we're on pips here, so it's 2.4 pips. If we were on gold, it would be uh, a few cents. If we were on oil, it'd be a few cents, dollars per barrel, etc., etc. Or if we were on an index, it would be an index, a number of index points. It might come up as four, three, five, whatever it may be, or decimal points thereof. You are now trading at the optimal setting for the euro yen in this particular time frame on a one minute chart. And it does that automatically for you. So we're now running at a 2.4 Renko. In other words, 2.4 pips per box size, which is the optimal setting. How does it know what the optimal setting is? It's basically working backwards based on average true range on ATR. So it's looking at a range of price action. It's calculating what the optimal box size is based on that price action and delivering it to you at the flick of a button down here. And as I say, it'll apply to any chart, any time frame. So that's the Renko. And then also we've now ported over the Camarilla. This is on gold. We're back to the GC contract. Just pull that over a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> Move the chat box down a bit. This is the Camarilla levels indicator for the Renko, uh, for uh, Ninja Trader. This is on a 30 minute time frame and this is laying out all the various levels up and down from the R, from the S6 through to the R6. There we go. And this is trading in the, this is the buffer zone between R1 and S1. And then as we move up and down these levels, excuse me, I'm just going to switch off for a moment again. Sorry about that. As we move up and down through the levels, you get these messages up here which tell you that um, you know the price action is approaching a potential region, maybe a potential breakout, maybe a potential long, potential short. You can switch these on and off. These are not EA signals. They're just advisory to help you understand how to use the various levels on the indicator. And what they're also very good at is not only um, giving you uh, potential target regions once a move is developing. And again, this is another aspect of support and resistance, if you will. So they're giving you potential targets for where the price may stall. But in addition to that, they also give you levels whereby you can set your stop loss uh, position as well. So it fulfills many different functions. It was basically um, born out of uh, floor pivots and the floor traders, many of those exchanges are now gone, but that's really where it was founded and we've developed it a little bit further. Um, most of them you will see go to S4. We've, we've, uh, we've also bolted on the S5 and the S6. And as you'll see, you get all these, these uh, different levels come up. Just go up to, let's go to the five minute on here. It's just analyzing the chart at them and there we go. Possible short position now on the horizon. So it's giving you just a heads up, given where it's trading at the moment, what is uh, that, you know, the message that keep an eye out that we're approaching this level or we're trading in this range, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So those are the two new indicators. I'm glad. Thanks for asking the question, David. Much appreciated. Um, and those are included if you're a if you're a full package customer, then those are included as part and parcel. And it's another facet of the way we do business. If you invest in the full package, you never pay us for these indicators. So if you're a Ninja Trader customer, you've got the full package, you get these two for free. The same applies on the MT45 as well. And it's a nice move developing. And as you can see, you know, the Renko, you've got, so we've got our, a couple of uh, our own indicators on here. We've got the trend monitor here, keeping us in. We've got the trend dots, which work fantastically well with, uh, with, with the Renko. And we've also got the accumulation distribution, in other words, support and resistance on here as well, and the little pivots, which gives us a little heads up when we're getting strength and weakness coming into the market. And the trend dots will always transition first because they are close to the market. The trend monitor takes a more, I will describe it as a more considered view of the price action. It's been designed to keep you in, which is why we always say, if you're going to invest, please invest in the trend dots and the trend monitor together because they work hand in hand. The trend dots change first, they go to these gray colors, 
in transitional phase is very close to the market as you can see the trend monitor has only transitioned once here to darker red it's gone back into bright red and really that's what it's designed for the two indicators in tandem here the trend dots you see starts to change to blue and you think oh gosh is this market going to reverse against me you know i've got a nice position here is it going to reverse against me the trend monitor hasn't flickered it hasn't changed it's just stayed solid red starts to transition a little bit here then the renko kicks down and we're down off the net and you can see the trend dots here have gone back into gray now we're back into red again and we've got the trend line here as well i'm just going to pass back to anna And um, while David was uh, was uh, speaking and talking about the Camarilla and we've been talking about support and resistance and all the other um, elements of the uh, of, uh, of, of, of price and um, and the chart structure, I've actually got the ca I've got cable here up. This is from this is something we were looking at this morning. And if I just pull up the, the three minute chart and we can see here once you put these level once you put these lines on i've got a combination of uh the the camarilla i've got the the, the, the standard indicator that uh, which is the snr that come um, that that we've developed and i've also got uh, the volume point of control and what i want you just to have a look at is this little piece of price action here we had this uh this breakaway from the volume point of control it's a successful breakaway until we get to a, a, a support line, not a hugely strong support line, that's at uh, 28, um, uh, 28.70, but it was around the time of, of the US Open. And I think somebody, there's a question that came up earlier. Um, Forex is, you, can you use volume price analysis in Forex? Well, we believe uh, you can. There's no central exchange. This is this is tick activity. What you have to be aware of is that there are three very distinct um, uh, sessions, and the the participation level in those sessions is very different, and also the sentiment in those sessions may not carry through. So you often see coming into the London Open, the European Open, and obviously in the U.S. Open, whatever has happened before you will get a total reversal or at least a trap move and then perhaps the original um, uh, move will will continue but this if you look at these two candles here now this is a three minute chart if we move over if we make it a six minute chart and then because overlaying one candle on top of another and what we have is here we have we have it here so we can see that is the um it's the um uh, uh, it's, it's a little hammer candle, basically. And what is also significant about this piece of price action is the move away from the VPOP was successful. Then it coincided with the uh, with the, op the open of the US session. Go back to the three minute, and then we also have the the little two bar reversal. But if you notice, the price has actually gone straight back into the volume point of control so you had a uh, volume going up on the up candles and they look and it looks quite promising you've got a, a nice volume there then you have the price hitting the volume point of control which you would expect because it's a congestion region it's a strong resistance region but look at the volume on those two down candles it's actually falling so if you were long this this move at the moment you say well okay it hasn't actually reversed from there, but it's got to get through the, the volume point of control. And what is it going to need to get through there? Well, it's going to need volume. It's going to need a, a fair degree of push to get through. If it gets through there, where is it going next? One of the characteristics of the Cam Camarilla is that there is a region between these levels, which is the R1 and the S1, which we call the neutral zone or the buffer zone. It's another, if you like, um, congestion phase. And what the indicator does, it basically says, well, yeah, it may bounce between the R1 and the S1, but you know, it, it mostly corresponds with our VPOC indicator. And it's just an area on the chart where there is no firm direction. It will stay between the R1 and the S1. And again, if it's going to break to the upside, it's first of all, it's got 
you know, two lots of effort it's got to get through uh, the VPOC and it's got to now get through the R1. And we just have to monitor the, uh, you know, the volume. And with cable in particular, it may simply carry on sideways or at least until the London fix later on this afternoon because tomorrow we've got a, a GDP for the UK. So is there anything else you want to say about this um, price action, David? Oh, and David was looking at the rate. And this is how it translates on the Renko on MT5. I've actually put a standard indicator on here. This is a, I think I think I've, I found on MT5 a triple exponential moving average, which I don't think I've ever come across before, but I'm always one to try something, something. Again, still down, right? Oh, right, fine. I'll move back over to you. So anyway, that support and resistance. Um, we're going to look at non-time based charts in more detail particularly with a view to um, looking at using non-time-based charts, not only for support and resistance, but also for entries and exits. But that's something that we will look at next week. So therefore, there we are, going back there. As I said, it's got to get through there. It's decided it doesn't want to go through there. Where is it going down? Well, that's the next level, 28.73. Would you actually be trying to take, the decision is, that your decision as a trader, forget this is cable, it could be anything. Am I actually going to try and take a, a you know, a, a trade while the price is doing what it is at the moment? That decision is a decision only you can take because it has all sorts of consequences from a risk perspective and uh you know how long you are likely to stay in the trade do you want to move back to you darling ask me to to wrap up uh this afternoon well here we are rally sets a top side trend line oh fine oh there we are you see you heard it here first. <laughs> Lovely. Let's just move on. <coughs> Excuse me. The indicators, the proprietary indicators, obviously from quantumtrading.com. So as David has said, you can just buy one, a bundle, or the complete package. They're yours. You own them. You never pay us anymore. Um, we have 24-7 support, 365 days of the year. All future upgrades, enhancements, everything is all yours and for free and of course if you buy one or a little bundle and you want to upgrade you you get the uh, credit for what you have purchased if you invest in the full package as also as david says if we develop new ones again just add it to your package you don't actually have to pay us any more money and if you want an extra set of indicators we do actually offer a 50 percent discount on the second license and finally with the education program this is primarily for Forex. There are modules on technical analysis, fundamental analysis, relational analysis, the mechanics of trading, and most important of all, probably the psychology of trading. But we are also looking to add a module for stocks, but that probably won't be ready until we have developed the indicators for TradeStation, because if it is, for, it's probably going to be more for stock investing, David, and for options. Yeah. So having said that, you know, if you could say to me, well, I don't trade Forex. Is there anything that is of, uh, you know, that I could use in there? The answer is yes, because the technical analysis module is applicable. It doesn't matter what you're trading, uh, but that's a decision that you would have to make. And you, it comes with a full set of indicators, either for MT4, 5 and NinjaTrader. If you've got any more questions, you can drop me a line, Anna at AnnaCooling.com or help desk at the quantum trading.com i think we're going to do a little follow-up video of what we've been looking at things we've said uh, i said this morning it's going to be cable and i'll be doing that later on this afternoon very very short just to see what actually happened to the price action perhaps moving into the london fix but thank you so much for coming along today it's been great having you here i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope you can come along next time which is next thursday for the london open and then we're back at this time so um enjoy the rest of the day's trading enjoy tomorrow enjoy the weekend and we'll catch you next time take care